We are now at a quarter past. Hilary, it's all yours. Great, thank you so much, Jackie and Liam. And thank you everyone for joining this session, the very end of the conference. You've made it through a whole month. So I'm delighted that you're here to edit Wikidata with us. Um, so this session is going to run similar to um, how we do our Wikidata working hours as part of the LD4 Wikidata affinity group. And that was uh, modeled in part on um, the Stanford Library's uh, working hours. So many thanks to Arcadia Falcone and all of the uh, Stanford participants. And so today we're gonna be focusing on adding references to Wikidata. And there are a few logistics um, for this session. There is a short link um, for this event page, and it's also been shared in chat, but if you're recently joining and need the link, just uh, mention in chat and um, someone will share it again. Um, on that event page, you'll see a, a link to create a Wikimedia account. Um, so if you don't have an account yet, you can do so, or you can log in with a Wikipedia account if you already have one for uh, Wikipedia or another Wikimedia project. And then um, I have some slides which are linked here and I'll get to, but in the meantime, there's also a dashboard today provided um, by Will Kent at Wiki Education. He had done the diving into Wikidata workshop way back at the, towards the beginning of the conference. And so we're gonna use that same board to keep track of our edits today. And um, you'll see our little section under week four. Um, so just, did someone yeah. have a question? Um, so if you have questions as we go along, feel free to, to mention in the chat or um, since we're in a meeting, you can um, unmute yourself too if you'd like to speak. And um, so you should just by clicking the link on the event page be able to enroll in the dashboard and um, let me know if you have any issues. Um, if you are already familiar with Wikidata and adding references and want to get started, I'm going to point you um, to the ways to contribute section that has a few queries um, you may be interested in experimenting with. Um, so if you'd like to jump in and start editing, those are a few ideas to get started. Though if you have your own areas of interest in Wikidata and want to edit items and add references related to that, please go ahead. So now that we've covered the logistics, does anyone have any questions at this point? I'll just take a peek at the document just in case. So it sounds like we're all okay at the moment. So I'm going to jump over to the slides to talk about references and Wikidata. And the link is under the logistics section. Um, and I have it open here and I'll just drop it into chat as well. So, um, and I'm not going to go into present mode because I'm gonna be jumping back and forth. Um, so you're welcome to follow along in the slides. Um, so until June 30th, uh, I was the uh, Wikimedian in residence for the Linked Data for Production project. And um, we started an affinity group or an interest group related to um, libraries and Wikidata in April of 2019. So since then, uh, we've been meeting bi-weekly to talk about Wikidata related topics. Um, originally, the group was formed in support of the grant and it quickly grew in terms of the scope and the goals. And 
was really evolved organically depending on um, what participants were interested in, what things um, I learned about in the were going on in the Wikimedia community, uh, people I met who I invited as guests, and um, thank you to Liam Wyatt, who is the Wikisite program manager and joined us just this past Tuesday to talk about Wikisite from his vacation in Italy. So, um, so we've had um, a wide variety of guests and then also gone in depth on various topics, one of which is Wikidata references. So this um, set of slides borrows from that presentation. And so once my position ended at the end of June, I was um, lucky to get, let's see, there's four additional people who are going to be co-facilitating the group with me going forward. So Alex Jung at University of Toronto, Sarah Kasten at University of Notre Dame, uh, Susan Radovsky at Harvard University, and Eric Willey at Illinois State University. So um, going forward, we'll be rotating facilitation of the, the meetings and uh, working hours. And anyone is welcome to join the group. And we have on our website, our full um, list of topics we've covered and um, agendas and recordings from past meetings. And so if you're interested in participating, um, you're welcome to join our call. Uh, we meet every two weeks on Tuesdays. And so our next call is August 11th. We have a Slack channel um, that's open to anyone and also a mailing list, which is where we promote the upcoming meetings um, and send notes and recordings after they take place. We also have a meeting note folder in uh, Google Drive that's public and so has all of our past meetings and the links to the recordings are in those notes. And then we have the website, which I just showed you. And then um, we also have a space on the link data for production page, which we'll likely be creating our own wiki project um, now that uh, the affinity group um, isn't part of the link data for production project um, any longer since that phase of the grant has added as ended. But um, you can see um, the uh, link to our website and then um, the event pages for the Wikidata working hours are always in this space. And so um, the Wikidata working hours are a time to do some hands-on work with Wikidata and an opportunity to ask questions and share information about projects that you're working on. They tend to be a smaller group of individuals than who joined the affinity group calls. Um, and then, and they're held during the weeks that the affinity group does not meet, um, alternating between Mondays and Fridays. And you're welcome to work on your own projects or you can um, work on some tasks related to a theme. So in the past, um, we've participated in um, the One Lab, One Ref campaign. So adding references, in this case, to Wikidata um, during the months of um, January and February and um, May and June. And then um, we also did some work uh, contributing to the Wiki project COVID-19 and creating items for authors of papers about um, with, uh, written about COVID-19 and we're doing research. And so um, our next Friday Wiki data working hour is coming up on August 7th and um, Alex Shung will be uh, leading a session on Wiki markup. And um, so that, is when you want to, for instance, create your own wiki project page. And um, it's the markup here. So getting will help uh, get you familiar with the markup and how to um, create your own pages and uh, edit wiki data in that way. And then um, our next Monday wiki data working hour is August 17th. Um, and that one will be uh, on Wikidata info boxes that can be used in Wikipedia. And that's also going to be led by Alex. And so if you're interested in joining us for um, either or both of those Wikidata working hours, you're more than welcome. And Alex put together this survey 
where you can put in your interests um, about what you'd like to learn about Wiki Markup and um, Wikidata info boxes. So now to our task at hand, adding references to Wikidata. So most statements on Wikidata should be verifiable and a source of information. And references point to the source that supports the data in a statement. So um, you can see here that uh, this is taken from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's um, Wikidata item. Her place of birth is the Bronx, and there's a ref one reference with a URL um, to where the web page that states uh, that she was born in the Bronx. And so like statements, they have a property and value. Uh, the value in this case is the source. And then the property is usually either reference URL, um, as in here in the case of websites, or stated in for publications and media. And there's a really pretty comprehensive documentation page, um, help sources. And um, this page goes through when you should add uh, sources and different types of sources that you can add. And it looks like there are some questions. Let me just take a peek. Um, so let's see. So these are, so I'll cover both of these momentarily, um, both of the questions in the document. Um, so I'll just go back to the slides real quick. Um, so in certain circumstances, you don't have to add a reference. And um, there's a section in the help sources page that talks about that. But this, um, you don't need to add a reference when statements are common knowledge that isn't disputed. So um, information that's obvious to most humans. So for instance, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is an instance of human. You don't need to add a reference to that statement. Um, if someone is very famous and has a and well known for their occupation, um, Brandy Chastain has the Occupation Association football player. Um, or if you're American and that is more commonly known as soccer player here, um, you wouldn't necessarily need to add a reference to that statement. Um, and then, uh, for instance, subclass of uh, film being a subclass of visual artwork, um, you wouldn't need a reference in that statement. And when is it not okay to add a reference? Continued. So a statement refers to um, an external source of information that can be easily verified. Um, so in this case, um, if you're adding an official website for a person or an organization, or you're adding an identifier, where all you have to do is go click on the value you've entered, you don't need to add a reference in that case. So it looks like this page has changed. I will have to fix that link. Um, but here, if we were to go to Mary Jo White, and scroll down to her identifiers. Uh, here we go, here's her ISNI. Let's see if it, this one still links. Uh, there we go. So as you can see, uh, it takes you directly to her ISNI page. Um, so you don't need to add a reference in that case. And um, John is saying in chat, uh, so understand we don't have to add explicit references for most identifiers if the identifier property value gets linked to a site that manages the identifier. Yes, that's correct. And then another case where you don't need to add a reference is where the item itself is a source for this statement. Um, so if you're talking about, um, if you're creating an item for a book and saying that its author um, is certain person, then um, since that information is coming from the book itself, you don't need to add a reference to that statement. Similar for a movie uh, DVD coordinates. 
So now we'll talk about um, how to add a reference in general, and then um, also how to add a reference for a website. So there are four basic steps. You want to check if an item for the source already exists in Wikidata and add the source as an item if it's not in Wikidata already and it's not a web page. And then you would add a reference to your statement and point to the source item. So for source items, the property stated in um, would be used. But um, for websites, for sources that exist online outside of Wikidata, you use reference URL and add the source. And I will do a demo of adding a reference shortly, but in the meantime, um, also wanted to point out uh, this great page that Arcadia had created as part of um, Wiki Project Stanford Libraries that has a number of properties that you can use with references. All right, so now I'm going to go to Wikidata and I have um, the item for Chimimanda Ngozi Adichie and there is a statement on our page that she is a MacArthur Fellow Here we go, awards received. So Mark MacArthur Fellow Program in September 2008, and there's your references. So I want to add a reference to, um, to this. And so uh, in our um, current online environment, it's most likely that you'll be adding a reference for a website. And these are pretty simple to add. Um, it will likely actually, when you just click add reference, prop up with these two properties, reference URL and retrieved. And let's see, I have, so I've already just done a search for um, Chimimanda and the MacArthur Fellow Foundation um, and found the page that says that she had won the award in 2008. So all I have to do is copy that URL and then um, you can either start to type in reference URL or if it happens to pop up, um, choose that property and add uh, the, the URL, copy it in. And then you'll want, there's a little add button right under it and you'll want to add retrieved and that is the date that you've retrieved the URL, so usually today's date and you can either start typing if it doesn't pop up or um, it may just automatically pop up and then um, you'll want to type in let's see what is today July 31 and we will Let's see. Oh, it would be helpful if my um, other tab had remembered that I was logged in. So let's try this again. Apologies um, for not realizing it hadn't carried over. So you definitely want to make sure you're logged in. And here we go. So we've got reference URL, I'm going to paste in um, the website I'm using and then retrieved. And I'm going to show a couple gadgets that you'll want to enable. And one of them, it automatically adds your current date. Um, so all we have to do now is click publish and you will see that your reference is here. So it looks like in the chat, a couple people are mentioning um, 
the gadgets. So we're going to show you those now, how you add those. So way back at the top, you'll wanna be logged in and you'll go to preferences and then gadgets and you'll scroll down and check duplicate references and current date. Make sure those are both check mark blue and then go all the way down. And because I already have those gadgets enabled, my save button um, isn't, is gray, but yours should be blue. You can click save. So now when you go back um, to an item that you're working on, and refresh the page, you should have those gadgets enabled. And so what that means is um, that, go back down, let's see, to the reference I had just added. And if you click the little blue drop down, you'll now see a copy um, button. So if you click that and then click insert reference, you can copy that reference and insert it into it at another point. So um, since the site I'm using is not applicable for these other prizes, I'm just going to go back and um, go to um, her official website and she has an about page and she talks about some of the other um, awards that she's won. So I'm going to let's see. Roll down here and add a reference again. I'll just take you through this one more time. So reference URL, typing, um, pasting in my URL and clicking add and then adding retrieved. And because you should now have the current date gadget enabled, you'll get that um, date popping up. And so now, um, I'm going to click publish. And we're going to go back up here. And so for field of work uh, poetry, we don't currently have a reference. So I'm gonna add this reference to her about page. And because I've already added it, I can use my duplicate gadget and you should see this insert reference. And it will add a reference and I think, apologies, I think I still copied the old reference. So what we're gonna do is edit and remove that. And I'm gonna go back and copy the correct reference. And that's the nice thing about Wikidata. If you do something you didn't mean to do, it's very easy to fix. So I'll just refresh right now. That's another good trick. If for some reason these gadgets um, are not popping up for you or not behaving as you think they should, refreshing the page often helps. So I'm now back at the gadget I wanted to copy and I'm going to just go back up to field of work and copy it there. So you just click the drop down and you'll see copy. Oh, it looks like it didn't remove that, but hold on. Let me just make sure I've actually removed this. So we're gonna do edit, remove, remove, publish, I think was the step I forgot last time. All right, so we've removed that reference and going to add the appropriate one. So I'm copying the correct reference finally, and then I'm going to go back up to field of work 
and insert it. And it's saving. And just do a refresh. But those are the steps um, for most of the references you're adding for um, a website. And I know there have been some questions in chat, so I can take a quick look at those and we'll see if this um, reference stuck. So it did not stick. <laughs> but um, hopefully this will help show all of these steps. So I've got my old reference that I've been trying to copy. And I've copied it. And I'm going to go back up to field of work and insert it. And we'll say, yay, it worked. Um, so that's really nice. It only works on references um, within an item. So you can copy uh, references that are part and add them to statements within the same item. And I'll just take a quick look over at the questions. Make sure. Okay, and thanks everyone for jumping in and um, helping answer questions as they come up. I think we're covered. I know there were a couple questions and I'm going to get to one of them that was in the um, document. Um, so, you may be wondering what um, types of sources are good ones to use uh, for references. And um, they are what are considered authoritative sources in the um, guidelines that are available in this documentation at Wikidata. Um, they can include books, uh, journal articles, newspaper articles, policy and legislation, um, media sources, databases, or web pages that um, seem authoritative. So they're published by um, organizations or agencies. If it's self-published, um, then you can verify that the information isn't self-serving and um, seems accurate. So those are some um, guidelines about sources. This um, page on verifiability, um, goes more into depth and it's not a policy, but um, currently it's been proposed to become a policy or guideline, but it has some good information about um, what Wikidata considers authoritative, what the community considers authoritative. And um, I, you may also see quite often um, that Wikimedia uh, sites are added as references. Um, this usually happens when the item is created. And so references are imported um, from Wikipedia. And so when you see those references, if you can find a source um, yourself, an authoritative source that has that information, then you can just remove that imported from Wikimedia project statement and add your own reference. And we did a quick demo of adding a reference for a website. Um, but just to reiterate, the two properties you use are the reference URL and retrieved property. And then um, we also went over um, the gadgets, the duplicate references, and current date. Um, so I would definitely recommend enabling those. You may also come across um, references from uh, an authority file. So in this case, um, you would say, um, if you're taking information from um, 
a database like the Library of Congress Name Authority file. Uh, here in the example, you can see uh, stated in, and that would be uh, the name of the authority file if it has an item in Wikidata. And so um, for the Library of Congress name authority file in the example, we do. And then you would add the property for that identifier um, as well. And um, then you'd say named as. Um, and in this case, that's um, how uh, her name appears in the Library of Congress um, record and then the date you retrieved it. And I know Adam is asking the difference between named as and stated as, so let's go take a look. So we have named as which is the name by which a subject is recorded in a database or, um, or mentioned as a contributor of a work. And um, the property pages in Wikidata usually have a little helpful information like the description. Um, and then they also usually include some examples. So you can see uh, Broncho Billy Anderson this is coming from IMDb. I'm going to just open this. And this should take us to IMDb. And so we see his name here, Gilbert M. Broncho Billy Anderson. And so you'll see the named as property um, with that name. So now, and I'll also point out, sometimes if you have a question about a property, there's been discussion about it. Um, so you may find an answer by looking at the discussion page because possibly other people have had the same question. And so we'll just go and look at stated as. So this is used as a qualifier to indicate how the value was given in this source. So we're going to go look at. Um, so here we've got a poem and um, it's saying that the author is Leanne Barkond and it was stated in the source um, being this poem itself. Uh, the name in that way. So I'd say that um, this is my interpretation, but anyone um, else who has thoughts on this, please um, jump in via chat or chime in um, if you'd like to speak as well. Um, so my thought is that stated as uh, is used with um, with the work where you're using the saying how the name appears in the source material, whereas named as um, you're saying back here, how the name is recorded in a database. Um, that what I would say is the difference. So uh, not, not an easy one to distinguish for sure. So thank you for that question, Adam. And then um, Adam's asking, am I using alternate names correctly to record variant forms for an, an authority file? Um, so that would be, let's see. Going back to an item. Um, so let's see. So here we have um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's um, aliases. So this is where you could record also known as um, other names that um, the person or item is known by. So if you're using, um, basing it on the authority record and that record has some variants, you could consider adding them as an alias. 
So I want to be sure we have some time to edit. So um, I have some steps if you're going to be adding a reference for an article um, and also a book. And they're fairly comprehensive, so I won't go through them step by step just to give us some time to actually edit. Um, but they're here and um, feel free to ask questions uh, as they come up. I also have some links for some documentation that we've covered or that may be helpful for you. And I'll just go back to the page. Let's see, where has it vanished to? Um, event page, pull that up. And so that if you want to get started editing or hopefully you may have already started, um, give you some ideas of where to get started. Um, so this has a little bit of information that we covered in the slides kind of condensed and then um, a few of the references, resources, and then here in this um, ways to contribute. Um, there are a few ideas for finding um, items to add references to. So you could add references to items for people with archives at your institution. And so if you want to do that, you can just click this try it button and that'll pull up the query. And so right now um, it has Stanford University Libraries, Department of Special Collections pulled up. But if you want to add um, the name of your institution, uh, you can do that. And a really easy way to just type in the label as opposed to having to know the QID is if you hit control and space bar, we'll let you just start typing. I'm gonna see if my public library has any people with archives. There, it looks like no. Let's see. We'll do. And you may find two um, different results for the, your, if you're in a university or an organization as a whole versus the library specifically. Sometimes um, the archives may be linked to the organization as a whole. So you might want to try both. So I'm trying University of California, Berkeley. And so we've got um, a few people with archives there. So um, you can make a selection and then scroll down and see which ones don't yet have references that really should. And it looks like this um, person actually has quite a few references, but you may want to take a look to see um, if they're, um, if any of them are imported from a Wikimedia project, because then you could change those. Um, and then you can, uh, if you find statements that aren't referenced, go ahead and add references. And we have a few other queries if you're interested in trying them out. Um, there's add references to items for staff and faculty at your institution. Um, so this is very similar. You'll want to click the try it button and then um, do control space and start typing in your institution name, choose it from the dropdown, execute the query, and you'll get a selection of people to add references to. And there are two more queries to get started. And if you um, have some other queries you'd let you create yourself and would like to add them to this page, um, you're welcome to edit it. And also if you have other um, reference uh, sources about references or tips to add about references, please feel free to add them to our page. Um, this uh, query will, you don't need to alter it, it will just give you authors of papers about COVID-19. And so you can add references to those people. 
And I'll also point out um, here we go. Um, oftentimes, some of the um, authors of papers don't have many statements um, on, their pay, on their item pages. So if you're interested in adding some statements, you find some really great sources about them. Um, the Stanford Library's Wikidata Wiki Project has a great list of properties um, that work well, and usually in general, for people. So things like their occupation or employer, field of work, um, official website. So you could add those. Um, properties if you're interested. And then lastly, a fun query. Wikidata has a number of items for famous house cats and you could change it to dogs if dogs are more your jam. Um, so you could see if you can find references for some of these house cats too. Um, so those are some places to get started. You put the URL for the page on adding references in the chat. Is that um, the event page? Oh, okay. Um, I will just recopy it though in case anyone else is missing it. This is our event page. All right, so in the meantime, I am going to stop sharing to give us time to do some hands on work on references and I'll take a look at things that have come in, in the chat in case anything uh, and the doc, Google Doc in case anything needs an answer and don't hesitate to either speak up or put in chat if you have any questions and I'm happy to do demos too if um, anything if you'd like to see anything else. So we've got a good question in chat um, about imported from Wikimedia Project. 
Um, and do we always assume that that was incorrectly manually added? So usually that was added um, by a bot. A lot of times Wikidata items are created uh, and were originally created um, from Wikipedia articles. So some of the facts in the Wikipedia articles were brought over to the Wikidata item. And so to keep track of that, they added that imported from Wikimedia project um, as a reference. But um, since it doesn't take you to a specific source for that um, exact data, it's best to add a source that points specifically to, that, to the data in the statement. So that's why um, you can replace uh, those statements with your own reference. And it's recommended to do that if you come across it. Hopefully that answers that question. It's a good question. Thanks, Liam, for helping with all the answers in the Google Doc. So someone's asking in the Google Doc, so I can add a response there. Um, many primary sources are in print only. Um, how should the reference be cited in Wikidata? So um, is that for um, archival sources? I can look for an example and add that to the Google Doc. a question from Iman in chat. Can I use reference URL for any sort of website um, such as encyclopedia, institution page, etc.? And yes, you can um, use reference URL for any website. Um, if you're, for instance, citing from an encyclopedia, you could also, if that encyclopedia has um, a item for it in Wikidata, for instance, um, like something like the Encyclopedia Britannica, then say stated in linking to that item and add the reference URL. Let's see if I can find an example.
Um, for your mom's question, what if it's from a university page that has an item in Wikidata? What's the best way to reference that? Um, that I would say uh, just the reference URL would be great. And then you can add the retrieve by date. Um, then there's another question about the 2020 Global Music Award medals. I tried searching for that. Um, would you be able to add the link to the item in chat?
So there's a great question about whether stated in requires a retrieved property as well. So I would say if you're saying um, stated in referring to a book or a journal um, where you're not including uh, a reference URL, then no, you don't need a retrieved uh, property. But if you're saying um, something was stated in a database and you have a URL you can provide, so you're also using reference URL, then I would um, kind of like the example from the authority control um, where if you were citing uh, like the Library of Congress name authority file, um, you could use stated in that file and then also uh, the link to the identifier. And um, I'm looking for an example still for primary sources. If I don't find it in time for the end of the session, I'll make sure to add it for um, into the Google Doc. Um, I was just looking for an example that uses it, which I know I've come across in the past, but can't pull up quickly. <laughs> It looks like we're coming up to the hour. Um, I have found, let's see, I can quickly share my screen. So I'm on Robert Lewis Stevenson's page, and you can see an example where um, 
with the, as was mentioned in the chat, um, you're using the archives app property and inventory number um, for that archive as well as um, how it's named. And I'll see if I can find a few more examples and add those to the Google Doc too for, for archives. And um, let's see, just check on the chat. And yes, as Adam said, um, to use stated and you do need to have a Wikidata item um, to add after it. Um, so you do need to create, if you're saying stated in a book for um, an article, you would need to create an item for those. And um, I should also say that all um, sources that are used as references in Wikidata uh, meet the notability requirements. And Susan has a reference that she shared that may be helpful for us. So um, here's another example where you're saying it's stated in a database and then you can use the retrieved date um, with that statement. Um, so usually for databases, it's great to add that retrieved property. Um, you don't need to do it for um, more items like books or periodicals. And so I know we're up at the hour and um, so thank you all so much for joining and editing. Um, I can see if I can find our dashboard. Sometimes it takes a little while to update, um, but you can check back in and looks like we've got 50 editors and um, been doing a lot of editing. So thank you all so much for participating. Um, and I'll look for a few more um, reference examples for archives and make sure that those get added to that Google Doc. And um, please, uh, my contact, my email's on the slide, so feel free to reach out. And I'm also available on the Wikidata Slack channel in the LD4 space too. So if you have further questions as you're editing Wikidata, don't hesitate to reach out. And thanks so much, Liam and Jackie, for facilitating such a great track for all of us. Thank you, Hilary. There's been a, um, quite a lot of questions coming through over the course of this time um, and the practical specifics and variety and detail of those questions really demonstrates that this was a useful session um, for a lot of people. I learned things, I helped other people with some things, I hope. Uh, so I, I think there's a lot of mutual exchange going on in this, in this working hour. It looks like you were the one doing the talking, but there was lots of talking going on backwards and forwards among us. So that was really um, more interactive than one person's microphone operate open would um, suggest, <laughs> led by you. <laughs> yes, and thank you to everyone for helping answer everything that came in through the um, chat on Google Doc. It's great because I um, often have to look up answers, so it's great that others already have ways that they're doing things or answers themselves. So thank you all so much for participating. And thank you for also not only hosting this session, but for organizing this conference twice once for the physical event that was going to be in, in uh, Texas and then now <laughs> online. Well done. Thank yes. you. I could not have done it without Christine Ford Sudler Aslow, who's the conference co-chair, Michelle Futornik, who behind the scenes has been a hero in staying on top of everything to get all the recordings up, to get the sketch site ready, the survey out and to all of our program committee members who also participated in planning two conferences. So thank you so much for everyone's hard work. It's been a year, oh, probably a year plus worth of planning at this point. And so, so happy that we had so many people able to participate and um, so glad that everyone could join and had so many 
presentations on such a variety of topics. It's been fantastic. Yes, thank you. And for the final note, I just uh, believe everybody received the survey. And uh, so when you have a moment, uh, do take the time because that would help the next uh, year planning and additional activities plan out uh, for linked data. So I just wanted to say thank you all and cheer on linked data. And everybody have a nice weekend. Stop sharing and stop the recording.